Thank you. Can you hear me now? I hope you can hear me now. Let me know over there on Periscope if you guys can hear me. No sound. Yes. Yes, we've got sound now. Okay, thank you so much for that heads up. Real Soul Seeker and Verified 100. Thanks so much, guys. Um, okay, so starting all of that over that I just said. Hello, we're back for another week of me rambling about analytics. Today we're going over Google Search Console. Um, just want to start this stream by saying thank you so much to StreamYard who is powering this stream. They've hooked me up with um, a year of a pro membership so that I can make sure that I am streaming out to all of the different platforms and that everyone can follow me along as I ramble. So like I said, today we are going to be going over Google Search Console. If you have any specific questions about Search Console, go ahead and drop them in the chat um, and we'll make sure that we can get those questions answered for you. So without further ado, Carlos, thanks for joining us uh, over there on Facebook. Okay, so let's just dive right in, guys. Um, nope, not how I want to look at it. Okay, so if you've been here before, you know that generally I am just going to use um, my data for this. So we are looking at website uh, or my website's data. So most of the time, uh, this is defaulted to the last three months. If you've seen any of my other streams, you know that I don't get a ton of traffic to my website um, because I don't focus on it near as much as I should. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to the last, okay, 16 months gives us funky looking stuff. Let's see if we can do 12. Ah, better. Okay, so this is the last 12 months. You can see, again, I don't get a ton of um, organic traffic because this is not my, my main focus here. So let's just go over some of the basics, first of all. So Google Search Console is all of the information that Google is willing to give you, willing to give you about how you're showing up organically on Google. So right away, um, this overview will show you your performance as far as clicks go, but this coverage is actually really important as well. So um, make sure that you're always checking your coverage because as you can see right here, it will tell you if you have pages with errors. So that's 404s, um, redirect chains, things of that nature. So it's definitely good for anybody who's doing SEO or web development in general to be looking at this overview report. Um, and it also will tell you about um, your core web vitals, which check out, um, there are a few articles on Moz, I cannot remember off the top of my head, who just wrote um, stuff about core vitals. I think Marie Hayes has also covered core web vitals. So anyways, make, make sure you're checking that out. Again, I don't have a ton of information on here, so this isn't very helpful and I'm sorry about that. Um, but basically it gives you a good overview on how Google's seeing your site um, and if there are any issues that they are seeing right away. So um, that's nice. Not really my side of the house um, a ton. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you over to some numbers here. So like I said, this is all the information that Google is willing to give you about your organic reach uh, and clicks and all that fun stuff. So right away, these are two of the things that people look at most often are how many clicks are they getting to their website organically and how many impressions are they getting? Ideally, you would see an increase in both of these. Um, as you can see, my impressions keep going up, but my clicks are still um, pretty low. So we'll look at that here. Uh, but you can see what the queries are. So these are the things that people are actually typing into Google that are pulling up your website. So you can see, obviously, people looking up my name, um, Beast Analytics, that's this, that's me, um, and some other things in here. So it looks like Facebook page insights. Um, I recorded a YouTube video and uh, wrote a blog post about Facebook page insights. And um, you can see that obviously now, now it's getting a little bit of traction. Um, hot Cheetos and, and Red Bud Light is, Hot Cheetos are red, Red Bud, 
or Bud Light is blue. Anyways, uh, that's probably because I wrote an article about um, Super Bowl ads and Bud Light was mentioned in there. SEO for truck repair, did a webinar on that uh, and TikTok. So we'll, we'll get into all these, but you get the point. So these are the queries. Um, what people are typing into Search Console. You also get um, the estimated volume for those queries. Uh, if you know anything about Google, you know that they group keywords. So I'm probably going to see 140 for Brie Anderson, Brie E. Anderson, um, and things of the like. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. Cost per click. So if I was to pay to show up for this keyword, how much would that cost? We're gonna jump into some Google Sheets um, information and like tutorials here as suggested by the awesome Ryan Anderson. If you don't follow him on Twitter, make sure you do so. Um, and Kristen Vaughn, both of them said that they wanted to see that. So we'll be doing a little bit of that here, here soon. Um, so how much would it cost? Uh, to get a click on this keyword if you are paying for it through Google Ads. What's the competition like? As you can see, I don't put um, too terribly much work, too terribly much work, I don't know, uh, into this uh, website. So none of the things that I'm showing up for are extremely hard to show up for. This is out of one. Um, so 0 0.03 out of one is like I said, not that competitive. So uh, just a, sh a reminder, I am in StreamYard. I have not figured out how to see who is jumping into the live stream um, unless you guys comment. So please, please drop a comment so I can see who's hanging out with me here. All right. Um, and then this is the trends. So this is really nice to look at because Okay, it doesn't pull it up, it just pulled up. But you can see where the spikes are um, over the last three months, et cetera, et cetera. I love a trend line, a trend line. Um, most of you, again, know that by now. So let's jump into the things that people look at the most, which are these clicks and these impressions, um, which you're usually looking where did the majority of um, Ankit Jacob? I think that's how you say your name. Thanks so much for joining us over here on YouTube. I'm glad you love the channel. If there's anything you would like to see, please also drop that in the comment. Um, it's nice to see you here, man. So um, clicks, obviously we want to see what is driving traffic to um, my, my website, but also what am I showing up for, right? Um, and I would argue that this information is nice, um, but you get a better idea of exactly how you're performing when you add in this click-through rate. Uh, and the reason is because, you know, it's great that I show up for, let's say, SEO for truck repair rate, but my click-through rate here is zero. And it would show me if it was uh, less than a percent, it would say, you know, like 0.25% of the time um, you have a click, but, that's just not the case because I've only shown up 34 times and of those 34 times, I've not gotten any clicks. So the click through rate there, not good. Um, I'm going to make this a little bigger. It's going to shift for you guys. Okay. Um, and so, you know, there, you can also put in your position. We know um, in SEO that the position that you are, um, that, you rank for or the position that you're shown is going to have an impact on your click through rate. So you can see for Brie Anderson, I'm um, in the seventh position, but I still get a 2% click through rate. And at the nine and a half position, I get a 3% click through rate. Those are actually pretty high for those, um, for those positions. So I'm happy about that. Um, I would say that we're doing okay there. But you can see, so for instance, I rank 5.7 for this query or queries like this. Um, and I've gotten zero clicks, but 48 impressions. Now, this keyword is not pertinent to me at all. Like, I can't do anything for anybody about this. Um, so I'm not going to focus on it. But if it was a keyword that I did want to show up for right away, I could tell you this is an opportunity for me. If I'm showing up 
this high and I can get some impressions, then I need to change my title tag and meta description to try and encourage a better click-through rate, right? So um, speaking of this, at MozCon this year, um, Dan Sodimano went over automations for everyday marketers. And I am not a programmer. I don't do a ton in like automations, machine learning and things like that. I really think it's cool, but I'm just not um, amazing at it. But he shared, so I'm going to share this with you guys and show you what I mean. Um, I have to pull down my screen real quick. So hold on. I'm going to show this to you guys really quick. He shared this automation tool called TestIM. So it's app.testim.com that allows you to train um, a website by letting it record your tasks, um, how to do tasks for you, right? So I created this one last night. It was super duper easy. Um, I just called it opportunities. And I'm going to, I wonder if I play this for you, if you'll be able to see. Uh, no, you can't see. Hold on. How do I? Oh, I should have tested this beforehand because I have no idea really how to show you this. Okay. Anyways, you, you can see it right here. I'll show you here in a second. Um, so you can see that I trained. So it can see that I clicked on the filter icon. Um, and then I clicked on impressions. So what I trained, basically what I trained this model to do is to go to search console and from search console, I wanted, um, it to set a filter for impressions. So for my queries that got over a hundred impressions, well, a hundred impressions and the click through rate was greater than zero. Uh, and so for my website, this only pulls up one, um, one keyword and the click through rate is 2%. Ideally, if I went in and I changed my title and meta description, I would be able to, you know, raise that number. Uh, and so just for me, the, those are kind of like the filters that I put in to, um, identify opportunities based solely on click through rates. Um, and I was able to train this model. Literally guys, it took me like five minutes to train this model to go and, um, run this. So let me see. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to try and figure this out. Um, because I really, really want you guys to see this. So if I share my entire screen, this may not be the smartest thing, but we're going to try here. Okay. So you guys can see this, right? Um, okay. So I'm going to actually have this run now because you should be able to see it. So you can see it's going to search console. This is for one of my, uh, friends, shout out to Brian Fanzo. Um, and it's going to come in here and it's going to set up my filters that I like to have set up. And um, what it's going to do is it's going to place those filters and then it's going to export the data and put it into Google Sheets so that I have the Google Sheets um, right there. The best thing about this is I can just come in and press play and then be doing something else. And when I'm ready, I can go back to the Google Sheet. So you'll see here in a second, it's going to open up this Google Sheet. And now I have a list of the keywords that have more than 100 impressions and a higher than 1% click-through rate. So you can see right away. These are all of the keywords um, that Brian has that are meet those requirements, right? So in my mind, when I think of um, a click-through rate, these are my opportunities here. Um, ideally, and, and I'm going to play with this a little more because I was um, 
Like I said, I just made that one last night in like five minutes. I, if I play with it more, what I want to do is be able to put like a, um, a bottom click through rate and a top click through rate. So something between, you know, 0.2 and 3%, those would really ideally be the keywords, but I can always go into this Google sheet and get rid of everything that has over a 3% click through rate. Right. But, but what, the reason I'm telling you this is because you do get, um, so much information on, um, on this organic, um, on the queries and things of that nature that you could easily identify opportunity keywords for um, search engine optimization using this. And it would just make it so much easier. But anywho, all right. So that was the fun with test I am. Um, so that didn't pull what I wanted it to pull. Okay. Uh, let me get out of Brian's stuff here. And I'll go back to my website. So this is my website. So um, if you really want to get a good idea of brand awareness uh, versus just like organic SEO for specific keywords, you can come in and add in this filter. And I like to do this. Um, I'm going to queries containing or queries not containing, and I'm going to put my name in here. And so you can see, as far as clicks go, I've really only gotten one click uh, that's come from something other than my name, right? But I've got a lot, a, a decent amount of impressions on some of these other things. Um, for instance, Facebook page insights um, that I just haven't capitalized on yet. So that tells me, all right, so you're showing up. How do I get into those higher positions and how can I, um, how can I encourage the click to come through to the website? Right. Uh, so that is if I was to take out my name. Now, if I do queries containing my name, I get a better idea of, um, brand awareness. So I can see that it's been pretty flat. Now, if I go into specific keywords though, so no, that's not the one I wanted. Let's see. There are some where I can see, um, I can like actually see the growth. Cause see, we can see that the impressions have gone up over time. So let's see, there was a peak right here on July 31st. So let's go see what that was because something that was also talked about at MozCon, I think it was, um, I want to say it was Joy Hawkins, but don't quote me on that, was talking about how um, Google will, and, and we, I mean, we know this, Google will test your pages at different ranks, right? So if somebody posts a new post about Facebook analytics, you're, you know, and it starts to get some traffic and people might be spending time there. Google will test it at, you know, position four. And if it does well, well at four, then three and two and one, whatever. Um, and you see, that is not what I wanted. Uh, and you can see those tests because you'll get an increase in impressions, a very sharp increase in impressions. Um, and when you see that increase in impressions, you want to be pulling out all the stops, making sure that content is, you know, perfect, right? So it just looks like on July 31st, um, my impressions were for my name and business name and yeah that's kind of what it looks like cool that didn't give me the information i wanted bummer um but facebook insights really i think that's where the increase in my impressions have gone so that just tells me that i need to write more about the things that i know and i i know that we can also look at the pages that have gotten the impressions over time. So obviously my homepage for most people, the homepage is going to be the page that gets the um, 
highest rankings and most impressions and most clicks. And that's because it likely has the most authority. That's what people are the most likely to link to. Um, so you can see absolutely that's, that's what got the most impressions. Now I did write a blog post um, over Super Bowl ad, a Super Bowl ad analysis that I did that was very nerdy. And um, a few tips for, okay, just a second. And Kit. Also, I don't know if I'm saying your name, so please forgive me if I'm saying it incorrectly. But um, you can also look and see which of your pages are driving traffic. So the query is nice, but um, you want to make sure that people are going to the right page for that. So you, we can see where my impressions and um, clicks came from. You can also filter by the page up here. Um, so if we did like page here, TikTok. So this is everything that TikTok showed up for. So see how my name, I rank fifth for my name with this page. That's not necessarily the best page for people to go to if they're trying to get to know more about me, right? Um, so I would want to make sure, I mean, it only has one impression, so I'm not that worried about it. However, it is something to keep in mind. Um, so you can always filter down by page, but looking at, um, all of this fun stuff, impressions. So, yep. My homepage gets the most impressions. Facebook page insights has been getting, um, some de decent impressions and then digital marketing workshops and TikTok guide. So what this is telling me is people are wanting to learn when they want to learn with me. And that's great. I love that. Uh, you can also see where um, you have rich results, which this to me right here is gold because a lot of people aren't going to be tracking that or not. They're not going to know how to track that. And this is a completely free way to do that. So I highly, highly encourage you to come in here, look at search um, appearance and see where like what queries and things like that you're showing up for. So for videos, I'm not going to have enough information for them to show me. Um, Brian, I'm going to use Brian's information really quick just so you can see this. Um, so if I go to search appearance, for instance, videos and queries, I can see that all of um, the queries in which some of his videos rank for. And these are all YouTube videos, how to work from home with ADHD, position 17. So I think I did this actually on last week's um, work from home with ADHD. Let's see. Videos. Brian's video is ranked third here. So, you know, it, this it's really, really nice to be able to show your clients those kinds of things, right? Um, so I'm going to answer this question just really quickly, just because you're here and I appreciate it a ton that you're here and you're interacting. So um, a few tips for on-page SEO. First and foremost, use headers. Go H1 to H4. Um, don't go out of order. So try and go H1, H2, H3, H2, H3. So don't... Um, only one H1, and then under each heading, you know, try and keep those things in order. Hey, Roger! Oh, my God. Hold on. Hold on. Roger Wakefield is in the house. Roger, thanks so much for joining. It's so good to see you. And as always, I love the stash. Okay. Okay. So back to on-page SEO. Use those headers, right? Um, make sure that you are answering the question. That's basically what everything comes down to is answer the question, right? And answer it in multiple ways. Um, so make sure you're answering it visually, contextually, um, writing it out, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or in tier two, oh my gosh, this is getting better and better. I'm just going to do this all day. This is awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, internal links are huge. Make sure you have great internal linking uh, a great internal linking structure. So you should always be linking to other pages on your website from every single page. Uh, and I'm not just talking about in the menu. I'm talking about when I'm talking about SEO 
in a blog, I'm going to link to my services page where I talk about offering SEO as a service, right? So make sure you're doing that. Um, make sure you have a, a contact page that has all of your name, address, and phone number on it. And if you have multiple locations, make sure you have location specific pages for each of those. Um, let's see other on page things. Use YouTube videos on your page whenever you can. I was kind of just hinting at that. That's definitely a secret of mine. So I like to put out YouTube videos and then about a day or two later, I will come in and um, write a blog post and embed that YouTube video in the blog post and Google loves that. So, so try that out. Try some of those things out um, and Kit, and let me know how it goes for you. All right. A couple more things on Search Console. So uh, let's have some fun here. I just, that was not the button I meant to press. All right. Let's do it. Do it, do it, do it. Okay. So this is how, like I said, so look at your search appearance um, and see what kind of rich features you have because those things are gold. Um, you can also look by date and all that fun stuff. Other fun tools here. Let's look at links. So these links are Google will show you your top external and internal links as well as top linking sites. So fun fact, if you don't have a podcast, go ahead and start one, even if you're just going to put out a few episodes. So I have a podcast that has like three or four episodes. I had every intention on keeping it alive. I just, uh, it got past me, but, um, you get a ton of backlinks when you have a, um, podcast. So that's what you can see. A lot of my top linking sites are all from podcasting um, and being on other people's podcasts. So, I mean, that's backlinking uh, 101, I think. Uh, it's just, you know, those relationships, right? Um, but you can see there's one here from Google. I'm not going to go too far into that, but go ahead and start a podcast, guys. I'm just going to leave that there. I just talked to my friend, Eric Thomas about this. He just started a podcast. Eric, if you're in the house, drop a comment so we can shout you out a little bit more. All right. So look at the pages. So I have, okay, hold on. There are people linking to my five fatal flaws. Turns out it's actually me from Pinterest. I'm linking to these. I just remembered that I did do that. Um, but this is a nice way to, to once you put out a piece of content, um, this is a great way to track how much, um, sorry, how much linking and backlinking is being done to these specific pages. So actually let's go ahead and I'm going to use Brian's. Okay. Yes. I Brian has links, Google. I know I made you mad. Hold, please. Hold, please. Hold, please. Hold, please. Links. All right. Why is it being? Oh, I'm using the wrong one. Okay, so we can see uh, his top linking sites, but this, to me, this is what the the holy grail is. When you're talking about link building campaigns, this is where you're gonna wanna go to get all of the information from that. So, whoops, okay, well, anyways, live stream virtual event. Let's see what this page is. So this is nine questions to ask before committing. Um, to a live stream, nine questions. Look, so it's just a blog post that he's created. And there are 28 external links from four different sites. So what I would do is I would go to these sites um, and, sorry about that. I would go to these sites and I would see where those links are coming from and really uh, shout those out and things of that nature. Cause that, I mean, that's awesome. Most of these are from Brian himself. Like I know that he, he created um, a medium. Let's see, I think if I, yeah. So we can see the linking pages here. So these are all Brian. Uh, Brian, Brian. 
I think these are, so you can, I mean, anyway, so you can go through here and see um, which pages are linking to, to that specific page. So this is really, really great. Again, if you're creating content and you're wanting to show a uh, link building proof, but like I said, so you can export all of this content. So if I export this, it can go directly into sheets. I love sheets. So that's generally what I use. Um, the lighting here is getting really bad. I'm sorry about that guys. Um, pros and cons of natural lights. Okay. This is taking a while. So we have all of the, the linking pages, whoa, and the different um, target URLs. So in that case, it's nice, uh, but I would honestly, I would export it from this view because you get so much more information. Now, what I do want to look at, though, um, and I'm just going to use Brian's for this as well is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to export all of the top link text. So these are, this is the anchor text, um, <clears throat> for all of these links that are going into, uh, Brian's website. So I'm going to show you a fun trick that I like to use, uh, from my friend, uh, Joel Kettle. He talked about this one year at MozCon as well, but he does this with reviews. So I'm going to copy all of these anchor texts. So obviously some of this stuff is spam and we're going to have to go disavow some links here, but um, I'm going to go to a word map generator here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little wizard. And I'm going to paste in all of the anchor text um, for the things that are linking to Brian. And we're going to see what the most um, commonly used text is. And I would use this for a few different things. I would use this for the copy that I use on my website um, to identify maybe some opportunity keywords. I would use this in my uh, Google ads because... Uh, Google is going to start associating your website or your pages with the words that people are using in your anchor text. Uh, so this is this is a a fun way, a more fun way, at least in my mind, of figuring out uh, what those words are. Now I'm going to come in here to my word list and I'm going to get rid of a few of these real quick, just because like com. That's just people are using an HTTPS www. Um, and the only reason I'm getting rid of those, by the way, is just because they were used very often. And so they can kind of be distracting. Okay. So let's apply this. I'm going to just change the shape because currently it's an airplane. I don't know why they have some weird ones here and make this a little smaller. And so we can see right away what people are, um, associating with Brian and, and what Google is starting to understand Brian is about. So obviously his name, virtual event, virtual right here is huge. Uh, and that's really good because we may or may not be trying to rank him for a keyword that has the word virtual in it. Right. Uh, and we can see that keynote speaker, um, but also website and digital and live and um, there's another one that I was hoping to see on here that I'm not. So that also tells me, so I'm looking for the word right now, futurist, and it is here, but it's smaller than I want it to be. Um, and so I know without having to look at a ton of numbers, cause I know not everybody looks, likes to look at numbers all the time. I know that we need to try and acquire more backlinks that have the word futurist in it because Brian just rebranded himself as a, um, a futurist, right? So we need to work on that. We know people are using a uh, virtual event, keynote, live speaker and streaming, and that's great. But futurist is really something that we need to focus in on. Um, so that's kind of a fun way to do that. You know, just um, export all this into a Google Sheets, copy it, paste it here into this word map generator, and you can see it. And that's a fun thing too, to share with clients that don't like to look at numbers. Um, and I try and do that as much as I possibly can. So 
let's see here. Um, it's also cool to see some of the things that people associate you with. So, you know, like empowering a future ready business, um, digital futuristy, that's good, but we need that to be a little bit higher. Um, but there is some stuff in here that could potentially be used. I mean, and this is not just in your linking text, but also for like your queries and stuff. This is a great way, guys, to find content to create or find what people are associating you with because we always think that we know what um, our customers are going to want or what they do like about us, et cetera, et cetera. However, we're not we just don't always know. Right. So, um, Brian has started using a lot of Prezi video in his, um, in his talks because they're interactive and he wants to create more interactive experiences for people. Um, and so we can see that he's shown up. Okay. So he's it, in position 52 for Prezi virtual background. However, a lot of the keywords that he shows up for are Prezi related. So very easily he could create a piece of content on Prezi virtual backgrounds and how to make them interactive um, and, and maybe how to create a Prezi virtual background um, specifically for your conference or something like that. And it, very easily he could come in here, um, create that piece of content in rank. Um, and as someone who is analyzing this data and somebody who is um, working in SEO, ideally, um, a lot of people that work in SEO should have this. Everybody who works in SEO should have this, even if it is YouTube, uh, things of that nature, because as, as you've seen, we can see all that information right here in, in uh, Google Search Console. So um, anywho, all of that aside, create the content that your people are looking for. You'll see um, all of these opportunities in here. Now, I have officially rambled for 37 minutes. That went by really, really fast. Um, I am going to put out there just one more time. If you have a question, a specific question um, about Search Console or SEO or analytics, go ahead and drop them in the comments now uh, so that we can get those answered and you are very welcome for sharing the tips. This is, I love doing this stuff, guys. That's why I do it on Fridays. Um, also, if there's something that you want to see next Friday, let me know. Um, and I would, I would love to, love to cover it. Let's see if there's anything I'm going to go through search console one last time here really quickly. And then, uh, and see if there's anything else fun. Oh, I just remembered one. This one's super easy. Uh, let's share. Share this one more time. One more time. All right, cool. So um, another way to spot some opportunities here, right? And I like to talk about this a lot. It's, it's a really simple technique, but again, I think we get, we like to make our data so complicated, right? Um, that we get a little blindsided. Um, and we just miss kind of the obvious stuff. So I just changed this to show me, um, all of the keywords that I show up for that, um, I rank in the top 10 for, right? So I just put that filter in there, um, for position is smaller than 10. And, uh, so here we go. Let's see what we've got. So we rank fifth for virtual MC. Um, and that's pretty good. And we've gotten a decent amount of clicks. Let me go ahead. I'm just going to put this click through rate on here too. So fifth, we have a 7% click through rate. That's awesome. What I would do though, is I would start building some of those backlinks using uh, and having people use the anchor text virtual MC, maybe create a one more piece of content that focuses specifically on virtual MC. So let's see what page links for that or ranks for that virtual online host MC and speaker. So maybe just um, expanding on virtual MC a little bit 
and trying to get this position because if you're in five you're just below the fold right and what we want to do is we want to push that above the fold and if we already have a seven percent click through rate and we're already in position five it shouldn't be too much harder to to get that extra edge um let's look virtual and see so one way to do that would be to write a blog post and put a YouTube video in it. See, all of these say YouTube. All of these are hosted on YouTube. Um, they are relatively new, um, but I think, you know, that could help us get a little bit of an advantage. So let's see here. If I turn this on, we'll see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, uh, improve. Hold on. I want this to work so you guys can see it. I'm trying to pull up what um, the page authority and domain authority is because once you know that, you'll know whether or not this is highly competitive. It looks like this isn't going to work for me right here, but um, you'll know whether or not it's highly competitive. This is just Mozbar, by the way. And it's a free Chrome extension. You can use it. Uh, it just gives you a little bit better of an idea because Google's obviously saying that the competition is zero and that it doesn't get um, much volume. But we've had 316 impressions over the last three months. So in my mind, um, that's still something that we sell a service that, you know, is over a thousand dollars and uh, we could very easily hone in on that that keyword and even if we convert one out of 300 you know we've made our money's worth in, in effort so all right i guess i will stop playing around here uh thank you so much for joining just a reminder if you would like to support me in any way um i do have a buy me a coffee page the link is in the bio of whatever um platform you're watching. It's in all of my bios. So I would love it if you could uh, help a sister out. I just announced that I did leave my day job. So um, that being said, your girl's an entrepreneur and could use the extra money for coffee to justify it. But don't feel like you have to. I just really appreciate you guys dropping by and hanging out with me again this week. I'll be back next week. Don't know what we're covering yet, but stay tuned to see. Thanks and you're a beast.